Welcome to Real Talk with Darlene Pia Lewis. I am Darlene Pia Lewis. And tonight have I got a treat for you. I know you say that, I say that every time, but it's because it's the truth. I can't lie, it's Real Talk. So you're watching Real Talk with Darlene Pia Lewis and my guest tonight is going to just have you floored. She's bubbly, she's fun, she's stern, she's intelligent, but she's got a heart of gold. And I don't know if I can share her with you. I might just have to keep her all to myself, but we'll see. We'll be right back. SS uh, Productions Association with Fort Jasper TV and WPBR is bringing you Ralph Conde to I-9, a restaurant on Saturday, January 27th. You don't want to miss it. For more information, call 561-577-7951 or call 561-255-3909. We are looking forward to seeing you. Remember, January 27th at I-9. You don't want to miss it. So, you are watching Real Talk with Darlene Pierre Lewis. You might be listening to our streaming at all the various radio stations that we stream on and even online. If you have an opportunity to watch this, I behoove you, I am begging you, I'm pleading with you to watch this because it's going to be a blast. My guest tonight is none other than Shirley Oxid. And listen, <laughs> Shirley, yes. I'm not going to tell them anything <laughs> else. Let's just do this. Welcome uh, to Real Talk, Shirley. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited <laughs> to be here. Thank you so much. Um, Real talk. Yes, real <laughs> I've talk. heard of real talk, and I'm, I'm uh, you're a little leery. Like, yeah. what are we gonna talk about? Well, you know what? From one real talker to another, I was gonna say. <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah. You have nothing to worry about. Here are the rules. Mm -hmm. You're talking about yourself. You're talking about who you love. Oof. You're talking about what you love, Oof. and why you do what you do. Okay. And anything that triggers anything for you that you don't want to talk about, you just skip. Like I said, you're in the driver's seat. I'm just here to navigate you. I'm your GPS. All right, cool. So, well, well you know, um, from, like I said, one real talker to another, um, everything is on the table. Yes. I'm, a, I'm an open book, so let's do it. Let's do this. Okay, <laughs> get right. back, comfortable. I'm sure Helen's probably going to be <laughs> mad at us for shifting. That's cool. So talk to me. Ugh. Why did you agree to do real talk? Uh, I'm a fan of Alan Daphne's, and I believe in his work. Mm -hmm. um, and he knows also, I think that he knows genuinely who I am. Mm -hmm. He knows my history, you know, where I come from. And I think he also respects me as um, also, just like you, a radio mm -hmm. personality. Um, and I also believe that he understands my heart, mm -hmm. and which is why I'm here. Well, that, we only invite a certain group of people to Ooh. Real Talk. <laughs> so I'm not being braggadocious. <laughs> I'm just saying it is an honor and a privilege because when I had the opportunity to hear a little bit about you, and we had a little chance to talk before right, the, we right. take the show. I'm like, Helen is just so phenomenal. He is. He's awesome. And then we're not. We're not. I'm not stroking his ego because. Oh, let's he, stroke uh, his <laughs> ego. The man's I'm not an ego for stroker. It. <laughs> stroke it. So, um, yeah. And then you know, as a pioneer yes. um, in the, and I hate to call the HMI industry, and mm -hmm. a pioneer in media. Yes. Period. And I don't yes. really want to say Haitian media because I. He's I've been, been across the board. Exactly. When he was in Boston, I think New York, Miami. So he's been across the right. board. Right. So as you say, media. That's media. Good. And we'll I say media that. because I don't want to clone him him into Haitian media mm -hmm. because one of the things that I admire about him and the quality of his work and then what he brings to the table is that he doesn't like just because we're Haitian a lot of people think that it's, everything has to be mediocre but he mm -hmm. does not do mediocre work yes. uh, and he brings so much to the community so bravo bravo kudos to Alan <laughs> yeah. and F about Alan and now about us, <laughs> now about us. <laughs> you know that bought me um I'm, I had to collect myself because um, I don't know if you know, but my sister passed away this past May. And then her whole thing, like when we, you know, I would call her and give her good news about something that I'm doing. And then like halfway through the conversation, she would go, okay, enough about you, now about me. <laughs> <laughs> so when you said that just now, I'm like. It triggered that, it I did, it did, it did. Let me tell you something. I believe in energy. Mm -hmm. I believe in chemistry. Right. And Helen knows there's certain people I am a people person. So am I. I will be with you, but if your energy is so negative and you're going to suck me dry, 
I don't need that. No. So he knows certain people not to bring around me. Not that I can't do the job. <laughs> right. Because I'm a professional of at what course, I do. Of course, of course. But I'd really? rather these kind of energies. Because I appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate you for that. And when yeah. I met you, I was like, so bubbly. So Alan said, you're going to love her. And I <laughs> he said, said the okay. same thing about you. Yes. And then another thing is that um, I, um, I am on a, a, a mini path okay. of really, you know, bringing together Haitian women mm. and then bringing together... Um, just putting us in a different light yes. and then allowing us to be open and free and non-judgmental and exactly oh. and then complimenting each other yes. in what we do yes and so many times and if you're especially i don't want to say all women because i really give two f's about all women mm -hmm. i'm concerned about our, our women. women i'm concerned yes. about haitian women i'm concerned about the haitian american woman mm -hmm. when it comes to what we do and then yes. how we can you know, collectively get together yes. like this, you know, yes. so then that's really important. And to just me. elevate each other because we all yeah. have <clears throat> gifts and talents. So when right. I meet people that say, oh, I don't have any gifts, I don't have any talents. I said, then why are you still breathing? Exactly. On this <laughs> yeah, let's figure it out. I said, can you cook? Can you do hair? Can you do nails? Right. You, you're well put together. So that's, <laughs> that's a gift that's right good. there. Exactly. I exactly. said, everything you can do can become a business because I'm pro business. Oh, me too. I'm pro. I'm pro. Let's stop clocking in, ladies. You know. Yes. I'm not putting I'm punch it for nobody. You know. Un and if you punch have to it. punch it to pay the bills until Yo, your business. Yo, I'm not knocking that. Okay. Yo, I'm not knocking that. Yes. I'm not knocking that at all. No. So there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like a lot of us women, mm -hmm. we lose ourselves once we get married or once we have kids or once we have our profession. Girl, when I meet a please. guy <laughs> and I said, Oh, hi, nice to meet you. Who are you? They don't say, I'm the father of Mad this person, yeah. I'm the I'm husband the of this person. But women, we always leave We say, that. Madame Jacques. Uh -huh. You know, Madame Pierre. I'm like, no. So before you were Madame Jacques, <laughs> who were you? Before you were Madame yeah. Pierre, and that's what I, I have sons. Right. So I had to tell my sons, before I was your mother, right. before I married your dad, I was Darlene. Right. And, and you want to keep that, right? I want to keep that. Right, right. Okay. And, but we have to have that balance as women. It's important. It's, I think it's important. We don't take care of ourselves. No, we don't. <laughs> well, you know what? That comes from a lineage of mm. um, sacrificial. Our, yeah, and it's like I think that even when I when I in retrospect when I look back at my grandmother, my great grandmother, mm -hmm. they were all single moms, mm -hmm. and then they always put everyone first. first. For example, like my great grandmother. Um, really, there's a story, and I, I I had the opportunity to you know to live with her and and, and for her to shine That's show nice. love to me. Um, everybody knows that le granny son. Like fell manger, mm -hmm. and puis toujours going manger, qui était, and then somebody comes yeah, by. and then so then let's fast forward to my uncle, which is her her um her grand her grandson. Mm -hmm. He always get toujours going to manger pour Madame Normil, and it's like who's Madame Normil? Mm -hmm. There's no such Madame Normil. Madame Normil does not exist. Oh wow! It's just that there's always a little food left aside um, for that person that just might show pop up. up or show up. Yeah. Especially in the Haitian culture, we don't. Mm -hmm always call ahead of time. Nope. And I have the hardest time going to my mom's house. <laughs> because <It's> like, <laughs> there's always somebody she wants to introduce me to. Did you need to. an invitation? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I'm totally the opposite. Right. Nobody just shows up at my, not even my mom. Hmm. She can come to the house, but right. she'll call me ahead of time. Like if she's on the street, oh, day, I'm going to be on your street. I'm going to come by to see you. We're like, ah. Mm. Um, but I still have that. You know, mm -hmm. I still have that. Um, in my home, mm -hmm. you know, my, my friends know it, and mm -hmm. I think that it's innate in, in Jean Yote Edwin when it's like, mm -hmm. um, toujours welcome. And then I guess we'll get into that because I, I grew up in a, like, when you go on whole exodus, I like, to Aisek Abdinio. Mm -hmm. And I refuse to call them the Biden people because yes. that's on lot like to me that's a Another derogatory title. term. Yeah, it's I don't like it. with the Reagan exactly and the um um what's the other president the Clinton, yeah, Clinton the both yeah. people yeah no. we're, we're stigmatizing. I don't them. do that and uh, I don't do that for a new reason. arrivals exactly. I call them the new arrivals because I think that since I've been living, mm -hmm. yeah, since you've been since living, I've been living. So then there has been like um, different. I call them Exodus. Yes. So then we've had, um, we've had, like, I grew up when the boat people were coming in. Okay. You know, and then after the boat people came in, and then there was like another one. After, I forgot which one was it before that. And then now this is like a, a whole other, other a whole Exodus. other group of people that mm -hmm. are coming. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when I take a look at that, I just I noticed that this um, group of people mm -hmm. may not be as supported. Mm. Wow. I'm going to tell you a little backstory. Okay. Uh, when, um, when I was growing up, first of all, my parents 
they didn't like file residency papers to come to the United States. The company um, came to Haiti back mm -hmm. then, back in the ninth, in like um, 1968, 1969. You you're going to get an IT, you're going to get laborers. Okay. You're going to get a factory. Okay. In, in the Northeast. Like and they then, did in Jamaica and China and Japan. It's, mm -hmm. It was in Haiti too. So, the papa vini ici, like, you bal kai, you two bal residence, and you take two fils pour maman for her to come over here. And when he got here, he got a stipend for work. Yeah. You bali stipend pour le travail, you bali machine, they gave him everything. So wow. now, fast forward a few years later, um, like in the 19, um, I would say 70s or 80s, when they 80. Mm -hmm. they, they're trying to bring people over here. Somebody would, I'm, I'm nine years old, people knock on the door. My Louvre at Portland, and there's like this random person, and we will launch your tea boot papier bum, and they were like, mm -hmm. and then I'll open the paper, like, okay, my dad's, dad's name, name is on, on here, there and his phone and number, there's a phone number dress. on there, there's a dress. <laughs> that sounds like, like my mom's house. I'm like, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> All of a sudden, my turn enter, is sleeping in my bed. I'm sleeping on the floor, oh you know. <laughs> and it's like, you know, and yes. it was a natural thing, you yes, know. Yes, um, yes. So let's fast forward to now, and. I don't see the same, mm, you know. No, it's not the same. No, it's not the same. And yeah. then um, that like, new person I, coming in is sleeping on the sofa or sleeping on the floor. Don't have a place yeah. to sleep. What are you talking yeah. about? Oh, it's wow. like they don't have a place to sleep. And then all of a sudden, Munkite Voyage has all an alternative. And I'm not saying everybody, you mm -hmm. know. And then I don't want to. Some of them yeah, do have, them, have yeah, alternative they motives. They do. You know, they want then, person, the person to come here and be their slave, be their servant, take care of their kids or whatever. Something, it, you know. Yeah. And, then, and, and I get it. And I get it somehow because Louis C. Et puis les filles ou ou fait ou fait tant ici et puis ouaf tout ou toujours avoué là je parle moun là you know it's almost like les moun là rentrer c'est like yo what's up yeah. you know like are you bringing something you know yeah. now you got it's almost like a, a, a repayment yes um and I think that but how they go about it should be better exactly man exactly yeah. so that, that's that's a tough thing and then um and I'm I'm seeing it mm -hmm. and I'm living it mm -hmm. and it's and it and it, it, it kind of stings a little bit um. So how do we remedy that? Because I was talking to a doctor just before we came here, and she was saying she wants some form like of a community center. So mm -hmm. when these people come in, so we can empower them with education, how to get your driver's license, how to do this, how to do that. But also how the person treating you, where you're staying at, how it's not right, and you don't have to stay there. Because sometimes they come and they're staying at this person's house, right. and they're not being treated right, right. But they can go out. They can go find other places. Um, I think that. Uh Oh, I don't think ever think that it's too late, you know, for us to do those type of things. Mm. But I think that right now, government can put their own bagay in place, but gonna find no spirit that it's really gonna happen. Mm. Um, so then I think that we like my cousin called me the other day, and all four of his kids and his girlfriend are coming in. Oh wow! Yeah, at the same time he goes to Ashra. <laughs> 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 See smile. And it's the dead of winter. Oh wow. They're in New York. Oh wow. We just saw the, the thunderstorm. Girl, I was the just there, storm. so I missed it. <laughs> but it, um, you know, so it's like no I don't know, like get if I no, we do, you know, we, we before we do the fiance visa, we do the spousal visa, mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. But Biden was like, yo, fill application, sir. Even and if I you don't know you. the people, yeah, you say I, I got you. The people who say, you can pay for you, bring it. Side note, this is another form of, of slavery. Mm. I, I think, think that, about it that way. Yeah. Okay. So I think that um, this is them again hitting us over the head and dragging us here. Nupezi on Pilmun and COVID. Yes. We lost, and then and the people that we lost to COVID, and then the people who didn't decided not to go back to work because yes. of COVID. COVID, yes. We lost, lost the workforce. Exactly. So they need people to work. Exactly. So then, why not squeeze? And then, mm -hmm. yeah, there's something yeah. is going on. Yes, you know. And why did they just choose? You know, those five countries. Exactly. And um, and I, when they've so for so many years prohibited Haitians from coming, they shipped them right back. All of a sudden, now they're opening us? the door. Yeah. So it's like, I'm, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I, I mean, you see I mean, the writing on. on the yeah, wall. Come on. And then you, they, what? So in two years, we're gonna rebuild your country, yes. and we gotta take our butts back. That's the part that I'm still unclear about. Mm -hmm. And I've spoken to a couple of people that do that kind of application and stuff. Mm -hmm. I said, what happens in two years? Well, we hope that like the Haitian person that comes here, and I can only speak Haitian because trust, 
the Venezuelans are coming, mm -hmm. Ukrainians are coming, mm -hmm. you know, and then we have, um, um, you know, we have people from Israel. So many different people are coming, but I'm only focused on the Haitian person. So what we say is that we get to feel papi in two years and then we get to stay, mm -hmm. you know. That, uh, we, we look in, when we look back, they don't want to be here. Mm. They were chilling. They probably had their pro profession Dude, over there. I know people that they'll call and say, oh, my feel papi by the Napoo. They say, no, merci. I'm going to go to the United States. Okay. I know people that will not come. Okay. They'd rather stay in Haiti, you know, and then, and then figure it out. Um, so, and, you know, just looking at it like that, but I really feel as though the ones who are coming, mm -hmm are coming, you know, to better their lives. Yes. There's a talk that I do, and it's called um, Bridging the Gap Between um, the Haitian Immigrant and Social Services. Okay. And then the whole topic is about how Haitian, the Haitian immigrant is the backbone of the majority yes. of, yes. you know, the metropolitan cities. Yes. And we're just talking about that with health care. Exactly. Yeah. We're 90%, uh, if not more, are Haitians yep. that are doing the HHAs and the um, LPNs. Some of them are not even reaching the LPNs, no. so they do HHA CNA. Yep. And they're getting paid low, lower. Of, yeah. low, and then they're not even getting, oh my you God, know, the because benefits. We, yeah, because we, we just want to do the work, you know, and then um, and then we want to do good work. Yes. I don't know any Haitian person who can sit up your your pop like do their best. Yes. The one, so then um, we want to always do good work because that's I think that's also it's in a work in ethic. I think it's in it's yeah. in our blood. It's I think in so. our DNA. We want to be perfectionists. Yes. Yes. We're too busy working. Yeah. We don't make time to go learn the language. No, no, no. It's not about learning the language. I think that we want to do it in such a perfect way. Mm -hmm. We want to have the accent. We oh, you're have talking the, about yeah. the speaking English. Yeah, yes, yes. Like, we because wanna, I've met people who, oh, you speak Creole, speak Creole to me. I said, let's practice the English. Yeah, you speak like, English. No, let's Creole. Because they don't want to say it wrong. No. They don't want to say it incorrectly. No. They don't want to pronounce it wrong. Exactly. I said, but listen, if you have the fear, it's going to keep you paralyzed. Oh, you have always. to step out on faith and do it. And I said, the person who really wants to help you grow, if you say something incorrectly, mm -hmm. the way they're going to correct you is not going to be with shame. No. You say, I was going over there. Oh, you were going, going over there? Yeah. You see that? <laughs> yeah. Very smooth, very simple. Right. And if you're smart enough, you'll catch it. Of course, of course. <laughs> and that's one of the things that um, in my, um, I don't do any, I don't allow shaming in my classroom, especially nice. when we're doing this. And that's something that we do. And I think it's like a defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to, let's clown that person so they don't see, you know, my faults. And I think that I said get salakayo could take her. They 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 like you know what? Yeah, you don't know, but mm Pablo -hmm. Cone like what mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, and that's how that works. So they mask it, mm -hmm. of course. All right, wow. So we've covered a lot of topics. <laughs> so we're about to take our first break. All right. But I'm going to recap. Okay. So we've talked about the connection with when I said something that connected you with your sister. Yes. And I, I like that. I'm sorry that I triggered it, but no, it's, it's a cool. good thing it's because cool. it's I, good I don't to mind remember your it. loved ones. Because yeah. I still believe they're around us. The energy, the spirit is still here. I like my candles. Okay. Yes. And then we talked about um, how proud of, an, of people we are mm -hmm. and how we want to do great work and right. how we're very um, family oriented. Huh. But at the same time too, we've talked about what I was talking to you about earlier how our parents don't talk to us. Mm -hmm. They just make decisions. Yeah. Somebody knocks on the door, <laughs> and I can tell you real quick, there was a bunch of people from Bahamas that was at the um, Chrome in Miami, uh -huh. and my mother heard about this lady that had a two-year-old daughter, and she was pregnant. My mother's like, oh, that could have been your aunt. That could have been so-and-so. So she Did said, it end up at your house? Yes. Oh. But my mother had a cleaning business, so she had the lady cleaning right. until she had the baby. She, she, she right, put right. her to work, and she let her have all her money, but well, we got kicked out of our room. Of course. <laughs> the story of my life. So I was, just, I was laughing because the it's like flashback, flashback, flashback. The story, flashback. story of my life. But you know what? We're going to be right back. And when All we right. come back, we're going to talk about you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Real Talk with Darlene Pierre Lewis. And it is an honor to get to know people, where they're coming from, their loves, their passion, their energy. As I told you earlier, you felt her energy <laughs> through the cameras through the radio station that you're listening to. We'll be right back. You're watching or listening to Real Talk with Darlene Pierre Lewis. All right, stand by. We're coming back in for my nine, five, four, three, two. Welcome back to Real Talk with Darlene Pierre Lewis. As you can see, we are not in the studio. <laughs> this place we is kind of dope. Isn't it? I like it. We are on location at I-9. And I want to remind you on January 27th, what's going to be happening at I-9? 
Ralph Conde is going to be here. And we want this place like a can of sardine. <laughs> We want people lined up. We want us to get very close to each other, get to know our DNA. I'm just kidding. Y'all know I can be silly, okay? So welcome back to Real Talk with Darlene Pia Lewis. I'm going to turn the camera around and we're going to continue to have our conversation with our honorable guest, Shirley. Oxes. Oxes. You know why I say, I have to say Oxes. Um, it's A-U-X-A-I-S. Oxes. It, yeah, a lot of people want to say Oxe, Oxes. But okay. my dad made it up and he was very determined that <laughs> Our last name, people, <laughs> is pronounced Oxus, Oxus. period. Okay. Yes. Um, but your name says a lot about who you are. I think earlier you introduced me to your daughter, mm -hmm. and you told me her name, and I was like, ooh, that is so captivating. <laughs> yeah. And then you briefly told me the story, and I said, ooh, I know where that's come from. Yeah. We need to respect that. Like in the African culture, mm -hmm. they have a whole naming ceremony. They do. They yeah. take that with pride. They don't just throw a name at you. No. <laughs> No. Je vivo. We're talking about the I different, know, right, 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 right. We're talking about like, all the different names. I was like, what did God give him? <laughs> I was like, he's poor. What did Je do? Je, you're still not donating him. What's going on? <laughs> Je donate to translate in English is God giving. Yeah. Giveth. God has given. And I was saying to you, because we don't know, we may crack up and laugh and say, poor kids stuck with that name. No, I don't. But you don't know what that person went through. No. Maybe several miscarriages no. or maybe, you know, and then they finally has this child. I hope no. God has given me a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> and even in the Israel cultures, in the Jewish culture, yeah. the names have significant yeah. meanings. I think, in, yeah, and then I work with the, um, the Jewish culture mm -hmm. a lot, and then their names come from someone who's passed. Yes. Or someone before them. Yes. You know, so it's like a yes. grandfather or an yes. uncle. Yes. That, yeah. That so it's an honor them, yeah. for them for to them give to you that name to exactly. continue the legacy. Exactly. Oh my God. <laughs> so let's talk about you. Ah! I know you're doing a lot of great things in the community. I know you're a radio personality, and I know you have several shows. You are an engineer. <laughs> you read my bio. You said no, you No, we it. talked about it. Oh, you oh, did? I'm a great listener. Listen. <laughs> Listen, you said you weren't. I am a yeah. great listener. You said you did something with. Um, I create. Hold on, you no, create that, stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Tell me. Okay, so um, my background is in engineering, mm -hmm. network engineering, and um, <laughs> I left my daughter at the babysitter, which is why I became a teacher. <laughs> Okay. I was working so hard in engineering yeah. that um, when I realized that I went, I, 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 would, I got a call on my way home to pick her up mm -hmm. and then um, on my drive. And then so I was so tired and exhausted on my way back. I just went straight home. And then and at four o'clock in the morning, I woke up and I'm like, holy crap. Oh, wow. So I jumped up. And as a mom, yeah. you know, and the her dad at the time, you know, he traveled a lot. Okay. And then so I run to the babysitter. And then um, she was like, Sofela. And I'm like, My daughter. <laughs> she was like, Labda me. Yes. You know? Yes. And I was just blessed at the time. You, you had know? a great person. You know, yes. so I had like, I had this Haitian family. They mm -hmm. were taking care of Ria. Mm -hmm. And um, so I realized that that was like my wake up yeah. call. I was like, okay, you know what? You're working too hard. So, yes. Working too hard. Um, but currently, uh, fast forward, yes. I had an awesome opportunity to create um, what they call like a makerspace engineering lab for kids. Ooh, I um, like I, that. Yeah, I've been teaching uh, for uh, about a long time. <laughs> uh, and I, I, I think I, I've, I've now, I'm in love with education, technology, mm -hmm. but education merges with technology. And that I think that's great. really important. Especially with where we're going as a people and how society is right. right now. I think that's very important. It's not for everyone, but I believe that the, an introduction yes. is very important. They won't know what they don't like until they try it. Exactly. Or been exposed to it. Right. Uh, and then when I say that like, in Haiti, there's not a chance like, for you to um, get into that, the engineering portion. Mm -hmm. um, because there's still a disconnect. Like, with the whole with with technology comes electricity. Yes. We ain't got no electricity. <laughs> so what computers are we turning on? What about the robot needs to be charged? Yes. You know, so Yeah. Um, Your I robot get it. will start talking and go, Ugh. However, you know, you do still see, you know, um, with just a regular cell phone and then mm -hmm. the amazing things that kids are learning. So uh I realized that. I had I had a hundred and fifty thousand dollar budget for a mm -hmm. school, and they said you could do whatever you want. Nice. I was blessed, you know. And then my girlfriend was a CFO, and then she said, 
miss a second mil dollar. You know, she's white, she's Jewish. Uh -huh. Whatever. <laughs> Not her money. And she was like, who got this ugly? And I was like, oh, really? Nice. I was like, just, you're going to just sign. So I did it. Um, right here in, um, in Davie, Florida. Okay. It's like a state-of-the-art makerspace innovation engineering lab um, where we have four, um, they have like uh, 3D printers, robots, nice. you name it. I put it in there. Nice. What age group? I was teaching um, <laughs> kindergarten through high school. So I get age wow. group. Kids. The people. whole Okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I wrote the curriculum and everything. But then one day, someone else from a church uh, asked me to put something on for the kids. And then, you know, it was a small black church and everything. And then I put the same, the same uh, a voucher so that they can go look for look for a clothes to work. Oh, nice. They leave with a certificate. So that's one project mm -hmm. that RTJ Group is working on. The other project that we're working on is uh, it's called Bridge. It's a, I call it the Bridging Series. So Bridging the Gap series, the first one is going to happen on February 10th, where we're bridging the gap between Haitian businesses, mm. Haitian owned businesses mm. and Broward County. Oh. So we're going to have like county officials, like um, the Office of Econo Economic Development and Small Businesses is going to uh -huh. be there. Broward College you is going to be there. You said it's February what? February 10th. Okay. Yeah, at the Broward College Library okay. um, in, in Coconut, on Coconut Creek. Okay. And basically what it is, it's like to, mm -hmm. de to, to, to get rid of the whole Stigmatism. us being scared mm -hmm. of working for the government mm -hmm. or working with the government, mm -hmm. you know, um, and they're not going to come shut you down and understanding yeah. how it is. And it's not that difficult. So then the Bridge in the Gap series is really dear to my heart because I wanted some government funds. And we're going to have people there like um, Magdala Rudolph. She's an IT consultant. She's um, uh, um, um, Haitian American. And she mm -hmm. has her own. She's won so many cool contracts. Nice. We're going to have Smith Joseph out there who's a local oh, good. real estate agent there. And um, even I have my favorite tea mommy from the swap shop. Who, who I, where I get my vegetables from. And she's gonna <laughs> be there that. because she's a boss and she's an entrepreneur. And then nice. she talks about her story about how, and then I just want us to come together collectively. One, to show Broward County like, yo, we're here. Yes. Look at where we're at. Yes. You know, yes. we run things. Yes. We put our minds to yes. something. And we do it, we, we, we make do it and happen. We're, and we're yes. dope, you yes. know? Yes. And, and we're doing it with our own money. We're not, we're not, no we're, not even, we're not asking for grants. Exactly. We're not getting government contracts. No. But what we, I said today on my show, on the radio show, is that there is funding available. So and when much. I look at the demographic, we're not even get if they break the black demographic we to don't like even, Haitians, Bahamians, whatever, nope. we're not even counting. We don't touch it because and it goes back again to my like my dad kicking out the um the principal of my school when he come in said that, oh, she can go to any college she wants. Mm -hmm. We have a scholarship for her. My dad was like, I don't need I don't your want help. your charity. Yeah. Oh. Hey, I, I would have been charity. charity. I would have been <laughs> oh, oh. I would have yes. probably been a Kamala Harris yes. by now, but real talk.